past year on this very show, we have gotten to see the insides of the homes Love it. of many of people that, you know, we probably wouldn't have been invited over. Absolutely. Now, the most interesting, we would argue, would be our TCL movie guy, Paul McGuire Grimes. Not only were we captivated by his DVDs that, you know, the stars he's been interviewing, they just cannot get enough of it. Everybody has a comment about it. So we sent TCL photographer Drew Shingen to show us Paul's impressive DVD collection and then find out a little bit more about what it's like talking to all those celebrities. Hello everyone, I'm Paul McGuire Grimes. Welcome to our home theater room. This is my our movie collection that you've seen that many of the stars have commented on. Is that a background or is that your collection? This is my like my, my theater room, our theater room in our house. And thank you for the amazing display <laughs> there behind you. Good. Wow. We are That's huge crazy. Pixar fans in this house. So. What is it like having all those DVDs knowing that you now have the streaming service so that you could, you know, you could do something else with all those rights? Oh, no, no, no. I love physical media. I mean, whenever I want, I can just pick something out and they'll never be gone. There's at least over over 1,500 movies and TV series here. I have them cataloged on an app. I'm a little OCD like that. I first fell in love with movies as a kid. Like, I remember the first movie I think I ever saw was An American Tale, you know, the movie with Five of the Mouse. And then since then, I started buying VHS and getting them as gifts as a kid, and then have loved movies really ever since. And I think movies are such a perfect way either to escape to a new world, to learn about a different culture, um, another, you know, way of living. I think that movies can be both educational and entertaining. We've got television shows and complete box sets. We've got basically alphabetical order after that. Then I kind of go into a different Disney and Pixar and then different directors that I love have their own sections like all the Spielberg movies are together, all of the Alfred Hitchcock movies are together and the shelving is actually custom made by my stepdad. He took measurements and custom made all this shelving. So this is all us. We put in the projector and the screen. Um, on the, we've got movie posters on the other side. I've had this poster for some time now that stand by me. Oh, it's my favorite movie because I love, A, it's written by a Stephen King novella, which people, a lot of people don't know. It's a Stephen King story and he's my favorite author. But I love its discussion about friendships, who you are, who your friends make you who you are, and that feeling of finding yourself as a kid. Uh, I, and I remember watching it on TV when I was probably too young to see it. It's technically an R rating, and I asked myself, that, can I buy this VHS at Suncoast Video, RIP Suncoast Video? Uh, and ever since then, I've loved it. I've seen it 8,000 times. So get this, this is an original sketch of the treehouse that the production designer drew himself. When my brother was in LA, he met the production designer and got this for me. So this is one of his original sketches. So this is a really prized possession of mine. Today is one of our, my press junkets for the new movie, Four Good Days, with Glenn Close, Mila Kunis. This is like a little makeshift home setup. So we have a ring light, of course. Got my Mac. So I've been doing these through Zoom. So I've got the link that the studio sent me. It was a webcam, um, just a standard chair, and then like my laptop clearly propped up on boxes to be at my height. What I like to do is put like put up some of the previous movies of the people that I'm interviewing, which has got really good acclaim. So I've got my Glenn Close movies up, got some Mila Kunis up as well. I have to have chapstick because I am obsessed with moist lips and then a pen in case I get some last minute question idea in my head. So how it's gonna happen is that I'll be in like a big Zoom hospitality room and then the people that are running the junket will then kind of basically slide me into a breakout room and that's where Glenn Close and Mila Kunis will be. Hi, we're gonna send you into the room with Glenn and Mila right now. Great, thank you. Glenn, Mila, it is a true honor talking to both of you today. Glenn, big show, one of my favorite movies of all time. So this is a real treat, so thank you. <laughs> yes, yeah, I got your movies. I got some Glenn's right here. Oh, look at, there's Mila. Yes. <laughs> I got the rap single. I wish I could talk to both of you even longer. Glenn, my husband and I, are and I are dying for the Sunset Boulevard movie, so let's make that a reality. I think movies are so powerful in getting you into a different world and a different life that may be so outside your comfort zone. I think we all need to be stretched from time to time, and movies can be that story. Oh I'll my gosh, what, this is so fun. I've been excited to see this story for a couple weeks now since I knew that we were doing it because I'm just like all of this, like the, the celebrities that you talk to, Paul, who have that interest. We feel the same way when we're, I never knew that the room down there was as big as it is. I had it's totally different in my head. How long did it take to get all those movies, Paul? How long would you say? 
I mean, I've been collecting this since I was a kid. So I've progressed from VHS to Blu-ray and some 4K. So, I mean, I, I think the first VHS I probably ever owned was a Ghost, you know, with Whoopi Goldberg and Patrick Swayze. Far too young to own that movie, but I've loved <laughs> it since that. That's like the first VHS I remember. But it has been growing ever since then. People are like, aren't you going to get rid of these? Or I say, no, why would I ever get rid of these? And then I even have multiple copies of certain movies on different formats. As you saw with that stand by me, I've got Halloween on multiple formats. It's an obsession. What I think it's healthy. What happens if somebody comes over and is like, hey, I want to watch that movie. Can I borrow it? Mm -hmm. I have a slight pause and panic attack in my head that yeah. it would leave the house. Yeah. But if it's my parents, I will let them borrow it. But I don't typically lend them out because I've had too many go missing. Oh. Okay. Stand by me is this your is favorite. This is not a video store. <laughs> <laughs> Stand by me is your favorite. Let's say that's protected under lock and key. Um, you would notice if what other DVD was gone. Like what's besides Stand by Me? What's a movie that if it just vanished, the DVD broke, got scratched, you'd be really bummed. I would probably be like maybe E.T. or The Godfather, Titanic. I've got four different copies of Titanic right here that I would probably go crazy if one broke. Yeah. I, you know, what Remember I think is so sweet is... Take, what was that? Well, I just think it's so sweet when you do these interviews and every celebrity gets so excited to see that extra moment that you took to pull their DVD right and you. put it up. And I think that that really helps you connect with them because they can see how you are authentically so passionate about what they put out there. And that's why I think you're getting such great conversations with these celebrities, Paul. It's really wonderful. Thank Thank you, I appreciate it. It's been it's been a joy, and I just love the conversations. That it's more than just like what drew you to this project, but real like right. honest talks. Yeah, it's great, Paul. We're lucky Thanks. to have you. Thank All right, you, Paul. Friends. Stay right there. Stay in your movie spot. We're going to be coming back uh, to <laughs> Paul coming up at four o'clock in our final half hour. He's going to give us his review of that movie with Glenn Close and Mila Kunis for Good Days. They were so excited. Glenn they Close were. just got a that kick was really out of it. Close is clearly an acting legend, mm -hmm. starring in iconic movies like Fatal Attraction, The Natural, and the big chill. Our TCL movie guy got to sit down with her and her co-host, uh, co-star rather, <laughs> they co-hosted the interview, did. Mila Kunis, to talk working together on Four Good Days and find out more about a country legend's contribution to the soundtrack. It's a shot we give you once a month. The shot essentially makes you immune to getting high. Is it safe? Are you kidding me? Now all of a sudden your body's a temple? Mila, you are working next to an acting legend. How right. does working next to someone like Glenn Close elevate your work as an actor? Right? I know. I don't know. <laughs> you kind of just you show up and you do the best you can. And um, it's a privilege. I mean, I, this is not to be cheesy at all. It's a genuine privilege. It took me the longest time to not call her Glenn Close. I'm pretty sure I still call her Glenn Close. But Glenn Close is, in, I know, I can't help it. It's so hard to not say Glenn Close. It's Glenn Close. Just goes on and on I am and so on. sorry that my drug addiction is so incredibly difficult on you. I know that you love doing research and you dive into the reality of who these characters are. Did you get to talk to Libby Alexander, who your character is based on? And what did you learn about what parents go, parents of addicts go through? Well, I asked her a lot of very specific questions about her reactions to things, and she was very, very honest with me, you know, and it, I think it really helped me, um, you know, get into into that character. When you think that the mountain's too high. And What's the collaboration with Reva McIntyre like? Because you've worked with her many times before. Did you write the song with her voice and tone in mind? or? You know, I usually just try to write a great song. I didn't write it with her in mind, but when it came down to, you know, seeing who the perfect artist was, it was Reba. But writing this song for this movie during the pandemic was, was you know, it, it, it was paralleling real life, like what people were feeling really like life punched a hole in their soul. If there's anyone who has the strength to break free of this, it's you. I really believe that. I'm proud of you. Some Oh my gosh, that's emotional just watching those clips of it. So Paul joins us now via Skype. Four good days, where can we see it and what do you think about it? Yeah, so this is now in select theaters. It will be on demand May 26th if you want to wait a little bit longer. And I, I really got a lot out of this movie. I mean, it's inspired by a true story as told in the Washington Post. And that reporter co-wrote the screenplay. So the, it's a very accurate movie about this mother and daughter and how addiction and codependency has really fractured their relationship. And these four days 
Mila Kunis' character Molly has to try to remain sober if she wants to take this medicated treatment for her addiction. So it's a really tight timeline, and there's a focus there, which I really appreciate. And I love seeing this new side of Mila Kunis doing a real heavy drama. And when you're working next to Glenn Close, acting legend, you really feel that power between the two of them. Oh, that's good. It kind of reminds me of the idea of Beautiful Boy. Remember the Steve Carell oh, movie right. that I sobbed hysterically through? <laughs> Do you feel like you, is this a, is this a thought? Like she's saying, she's watching the interview and saying, "I would just cry, lose it through the movie." I I think you will because you feel that pain and that hurt between yeah. the two of them. How do they try to rebuild the trust, rebuild the relationship together? And I, like the two of them together, I felt that deep intensity between them. But there's hope. There's there's there is hope toward the end. And I think that that's what's great about the movie. It didn't just feel like, oh, this is dark, just being a dark addiction sure, movie. For the sake of there's, being there dark. is levity and hope behind it. Uh, ticket stubs? Three and a half out of five ticket stubs. And I think that there's a lot you can get out of this regarding addiction and dependency and it really being a disease. Looks like great performances too. Okay, Paul also got to sit down with the cast of a new superhero show on Netflix. Take a look at this. Josh, it was really great talking to you today. Congrats on this series. It is so huge and you're fantastic in it. Thank you so much, Paul. How's life in Minneapolis? It's it's pretty good. No, you get back here once in a once in a blue moon. I do. I'm a little angry with the Vikings right now, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> the world is changing. So I guess we're gonna have to change with it. Now, what was it like for both of you to put on the superhero suit for the very first time? Because costumes are so important to any actor. It is its own character, the suit. It's it's Hugely expensive to build, um, uh, but at the same at the same time, it's uh, it's extremely uncomfortable, extremely hot, very restrictive, very claustrophobic. You put it on, you feel amazing. About 15 minutes later, you're starting to feel exhausted from fighting the suit within. <laughs> when it's completed and you put it on, and the team of people, it was really moving actually that have built the suit to come out and. They see you moving in there for the first time. It's it's absolutely amazing. I don't really love like dressing up at Halloween or I wasn't a girl who was like, let me dress up like Wonder Woman or this or that. You just walk taller, you you I, I, you have a swagger that perhaps you didn't have before. I the cape and the wig and the beard and all of it just felt like, I'll put it this way, I walked down to, I walked into the place, nobody really looked twice. You put that thing on, everybody pays attention. It's just like this big sort of imposing, you know, silhouette that you cast. So what would you do if you were the one calling the shot? Boy, I'm intrigued by this, cool. Paul. I've not heard of this story before or anything like that. What did you think of Jupiter's Legacy? Uh, you know, I think that this will really mainly appeal to maybe a younger demographic or like diehard comic book series because it is based on a comic book. I don't think that it really has the like broad appeal that say a Marvel or a DC film has. Um, and I think it comes down to the writing. It takes place during two different timelines, the 1920s and today. It's about a family of superheroes and how this next generation or kids really don't want those powers or those responsibilities anymore. And there's way too much going on, in my opinion. Oh, okay, so maybe the young ones will still think, like I could I feel like say, my kids might still think it's cool. Would our kids, is this like sit down and watch it with the fam like we do some other Marvel things? Yeah, I mean, definitely give it a try to see if they are kind of old enough for it. I think that they'll love the costumes. There's a really great, uh, big color palette that's fun. You got the cape, you got the boots. So I think that kids will love the color and the execution of it. But it's a lot to kind of keep straight between all the different characters, all the conflict going on. And then right. there's episodes where characters just disappear. And I think the writers try to tackle too much in just this first season to try to set up this big universe where I think they could have explored it as the series kept going on. Okay, so first season is eight episodes and it is on Netflix. Ticket stubs yeah. for this? So two and a half out of five ticket stops. It's not terrible by any means. I think that people will like it, but I think if you're wanting it to be the next Marvel or DC, it's not going to be that. Okay, Paul, that's Thank good. You, Paul. It's all about expectations, you know? That's He helps us manage it. For more <laughs> of Paul's thoughts on the Oscars and to see interviews with lots of stars and directors and all of his movie reviews, you can He's go to his website. I know, Paul's trip to the movies. Um, he also has a YouTube channel, too. You can also listen to Paul. He's on the Colleen and Bradley show on My Talk 1071 every Friday. And TCL's movie trip is brought to you by Muska Lighting. Spring means we're all heading outside, so it's a great time to focus on your outdoor lighting. Muska Lighting has everything you need to update your home to get those latest trends worked in. Look at those. That looks great. Woo, visit one of their showrooms. They're in Eden Prairie or Roseville. Coming up next, why a flower guy at a wedding is going viral. Okay. Tell you about it next.
Thanks to Muska Lighting for sponsoring TCL's movie trip. Replace old and dated fixtures with a new light and change the look and feel of your home. Our mudroom fixture from Muska Lighting is a total showstopper. We get compliments from everyone who walks through the door. Talk to the experts at Muska Lighting in Roseville and Eden Prairie for help finding the perfect light for you.